Hey, welcome to another episode of Chad's Reviews. Sean's joining us again. Your first outdoor review. I know. It's kind of a. It's a nice day. It's for a different it. feeling. Yeah. Um, this is another beer that I got in a trade with Joe from Proper Hops TV. This is my first ever Allagash beer. And this is also from Joe. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Um, it's an Allagash 2011 interlude. Ale aged in red wine barrels with Britannomyces. Open cautiously, content under pressure. 9.5 ABV. Alright, so we have a. It's like a glowing orange kind of color. Amber. Yeah, like a peach color. I must have got more sediment than you because yours is a little clearer. I poured it a little. Uh, I poured half of it with uh, the head of the bottle and the angle. Yeah. Smell. Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can smell the Britannomyces. It even nice. smells sour. Yeah. That's what, that's what I was alluding to. <laughs> um, yeah, aged in red wine barrel, so there is like a, a certain vinous quality to it, aroma-wise. I can't wait to dive into this, so cheers. Wow. That's pretty darn sour. It's very, very sour. And a little drier than I thought it would be. Mm. Yeah, it almost, it has a warmth to it from, uh, you know, the alcohol. And then, I mean, 9.5 is not that big, but there's definite kind of alcohol, you know. That sourness is... Pure energy in there. That sourness is right on the front, too, mm. and I feel it throughout my mouth. And it hurts like the back of your throat. I pretty much just get sheer dry sourness. Like, yeah. I'm not getting, you know, it said Asian red wine barrel, so I was expecting some kind of a, you know, dark fruity taste to it. I don't really get that. It's, I mean, it's like the, imagine like the most dry sour, or, or the dry, most dry cider you've ever had, and then multiply that times 10 or 100 or whatever, and that's what you get here. I do get a little of like the, I, I guess the, the red wine flavor that I'm getting is just sheer sourness, like all throughout too. It's not, it's yeah. not isolated to just the front. It's definitely on the back end. I'm still, still yeah. getting the sour. Well, right as it goes down, like if you cluck your tongue, you can kind of pull some more sourness off of it. But um, it's finishing pretty clean. Like it's not. There's no residual, you know, sourness or dryness or anything. I'm kind of disappointed in a way because I was expecting more flavor out of this, but all I get is just like this dry, kind of neutral tasting sour, like acidic, you know, vinegar vinegarous type taste to it. I mean, do you get any actual flavors out of here? I mean, I mean, it. I can kind of taste the. I guess the. The, uh, the remaining characteristics that you'd get out of a red wine. Yeah. Like if you, I don't know, it just it it definitely has the the um, undertones of whatever you would expect to come from red wine barrels. But yeah. other than that, I mean, I, it's way drier than what, what I was expecting when I yeah. poured it. Just the scent that I was getting, it kind of it had that sweet scent to it that. Yeah. Sweet, tart, like whiny yeah. scent to it. Yeah. And when I when I took my first sip, I, it was way drier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I usually, I'm usually a fan of cider, ciders, or ciders, sours, because they have, well, first of all, they have a cider-like quality to them. Second of all, they have like a like candy kind of taste to them. A lot of lambics and gooses and stuff. They taste like Sour Patch Kids candy. But this doesn't really have like a flavor to it. Like I'm not getting really red wine or you know, you know, citrus or anything. I'm just getting like this dry sourness. It's not changing. I'm kind of disappointed. And the sediment is like when I poured the rest of it, it didn't do anything to it. Mm. If anything, it enhanced the the whole sourness that was there before. I get like maybe like a little bit of like an apple cider, like like a non-alcoholic real apple cider kind of taste to it but other than that not much what do you what do you think as far as grade 
I'll let you go first. Um, well, drinkability, you're not going to sit there and drink one. Uh, you're going to have one of these if you're going to have one. you got to split a bottle for sure. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's not really, it's not something that you would, you would have multiple of. And, I mean, as far as, like, the, the not being able to get past the sour. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, maybe a six. Really? I'm actually going to go even lower. I'm going to say four. I'm going to say this is below average because there's really not a whole lot here to like. Like, I'm impressed by the the sour. Like, you know, sour beers are a bit of a magic of brewing because you never know what the yeast is going to do. But, you know, like, they need to have, like, some actual flavor here. Give me some, give me some grape. Give me some, you know, citrus or, you know, spice or something. But all I'm getting is a sure... Sheer dry, dryness, sourness, tartness, no flavor. Well, I've never had a sour before, so I have nothing to really compare it to. But on, in, in and of itself, on its own, I mean... Yeah. All right, well, thanks again to Joe for the bottle. I'm, so far, I'm sorry I didn't really like it that much, but it was definitely interesting. Just like the Three Floyds Blackstone Stout didn't blow our minds, but it was really interesting. So, thanks, Sean, for coming over. We're actually homebrewing today, so... We'll see how that turns out. Yep. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Should we do something like stay thirsty, my friend? Or something? Mm -hmm. We need a sign off. <laughs>